it has been more than two weeks since four Idaho college students were found murdered. Police in the college town of Moscow, Idaho, as Poppy Hill was saying, have said all along that they believe this was a targeted, uh, targeted attack. Now they're clarifying that statement, though, creating a little bit of confusion, a lot of confusion, actually, as students and residents have held a candlelight memorial service last night. You can see all the people who were there. As police were also talking as this was going on about a miscommunication they had with the county prosecutor's office. CNN's Veronica Miracle is live this morning near Moscow, Idaho. And Veronica, this has been the big question that has been plaguing this, which is what police are saying, what they aren't saying, and what we still do not know about what happened here. That's right, Caitlin. And a lot of this confusion in the last 12 hours seems to be around the notion that two or one of the specific roommates were specifically targeted. I'm going to read just part of their statement that they released last night. Detectives do not currently know if the residents or any occupants were specifically targeted, but continue to investigate. Police haven't answered our questions about this confusion, kind of the going back and forth. But I think here in the community, all that really matters is that a suspect still has hasn't been arrested. The unsolved fatal stabbing deaths of four University of Idaho students leaves the Moscow community with grave uncertainty and little information more than two weeks after the attack. You're just going to have to love each other. You guys are just going to have to hug each other. The university held a vigil Wednesday where the family spoke about their loss. She was just such a happy, just a, such a great kid, such a perfect little baby and so just smart and funny and beautiful. That that's the most important message that we have for you and your families is to make sure that you spend as much time as possible with those people because time is precious and it's something you can't get back. Victims Kaylee Gonsalves and Madison Mogan were childhood friends. Gonsalves's dad spoke about how they met. Sixth grade, they just found each other and every day they did homework together, they came to our house together, they shared everything. And in the end, they died together in the same room, in the same bed. And it's, it's a shame and it hurts. But the beauty of the two always being together is something that will, will it comforts us, it lets us know that they were with their, their best friends in the whole world. A spokesperson for the Moscow Police Department told Fox News they are starting to receive forensic testing results related to the investigation. This comes as police are now clarifying previous statements made by the Latah County Prosecutor's Office that said the murders were targeted and isolated. It's unclear why the police's latest statement says detectives do not currently know if the victims were targeted, as several previous on-the-record statements and on-camera comments have specifically cited this incident as a targeted attack. Investigators have retraced the victim's whereabouts on the night of the murder and combed through the off-campus house where the four lived in, but still have not named a suspect. On Tuesday, authorities removed cars from the crime scene. The Idaho State Police has provided heightened security for the campus and the community, given the mounting fears a murderer is still at large. I thought it would make me feel safer, but it doesn't because it just reminds me that there's still someone out there. Yes, yeah, certainly here in the community, everywhere you go, there is an increased security presence. Idaho State Police everywhere just trying to make the community feel safe. Caitlin? Yeah, you can see why they don't. Veronica, thank you for that report. Let's discuss now. I want to bring in CNN's Chief Law Enforcement and Intelligence Analyst, Mr. John Miller. Good morning to you. Morning, this story Don. is fascinating in the sense that this is a small town, right, and they don't have anyone yet. Initially, they said that they didn't think it was a threat to the public, and now they're saying that it possibly is a threat to the public. What do you make of all this? Well, I think they're getting tied up in semantics, which is a symptom of not having a break in the case that they can talk about that's newsworthy. So people are going back, trying to interpret statements word by word. I think what you have here is uh, you're now going into the third week of the case. Um, that's, that means there's been enough time for DNA results and other things to come back. Of course, what they're looking for there is who are the known contributors, the victims and people who lived in the house. Where is that unknown contributor? Um, they take the unknown DNA, they put it in the CODIS system with the FBI. That gives them two things. One, everybody who was arrested on a felony who supplied DNA. So that's a good start. Is there an unknown contributor that rings in CODIS? But second, 
It gives them all the DNA that's been in the system that was recovered at other crime scenes that isn't identified. So if it doesn't lead them to a person, it can lead them to another crime scene. So all those wheels are turning now, and those clues are going to be coming in and run down. So they have said nothing about a suspect. <clears throat> Does that mean they don't know anything about a suspect? Does that mean they're just not ready to say it yet? So that's a great question. Yesterday they said, we have not named a suspect, to clarify. But that doesn't mean there hasn't been a suspect. They have been through a handful of suspects that have risen and fallen as their alibis have checked out. And they'll go through more. But are the kids safe? So... Every, all those college students. So, so let's talk about yes, but no. Uh. I mean, there's an increased police presence. Um, the state police is now patrolling the campus and the town, along with local authorities. But, you know, until we, knew, until we know the, the who and the what and the why, it's hard to say. This targeted discussion, targeted or not targeted, um, has some meaning. Whoever went to that house came there deliberately. It appears with the intent to kill everyone inside armed with a particular weapon that they probably brought for that particular purpose. Um, were they targeting the house? Were they targeting an individual inside? Um, or was it, was it always just going to be everybody? That's what they're struggling in the, in the Y department. So the more random this is, if it's a drifter who said, I'm going to go in that house and kill everybody, the less everybody's safe. If it's something to do with one or more of those people, then it's contained. But until they either know that answer or tell us that answer, it's hard to assure everybody everything's safe. We're yeah, no one's been arrested. Yeah, and we're left to wonder, yeah. Thank you very much, John Miller. Appreciate it.